So, <sighs> I'm gonna go take a nap now. <laughs> You're tired? I'm ready for some more. It's that youth. Any questions? Uh, yeah. AJ, what does it mean to have your dad on this card? I know this is something you've wanted to do for, for quite a long time, and now it's finally here on this huge card. Uh, it, it's a lot, man. Um, for me, I've, I've kind of realized something over the years. Uh, McKees work better under pressure. So the more pressure there is, the better we work. Um, with this being the first round of the Million Dollar Tournament, um, first father and son stepping in an octagon or cage together, it's it's phenomenal, man. It means a lot. You know, it, it sets the tone for me to go out there and do what I got to do. Um, it puts a stamp on the finish of his career and his his great legacy, being eight years undefeated and whatnot. Um, so for me, it, it's just continuing that legacy and pushing, man. Setting setting new and higher standards, you know, and, and doing things that can't be done. He went eight years undefeated. I'm three years undefeated, so I got to top that first. Have you, have you thought about what that's going to be like? I'm sure you've gone to his fights when you were younger and you know seen him compete. And you guys are both going to be competing. You know, have you thought about what that's going to feel like? I'm going to probably be nervous as hell, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be shitting bricks the whole fight. I get more nervous for my teammates fighting than I do. So with my father, it, it's, I don't know. It's going to be scary, you know. If he wins, I got to go win. If he loses, I got to go hurt Jordan. But uh, regardless, I got a job to do, and that's, that's kick, kick Jordan's ass. Are you, guys, are you guys cornering each other? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. that, that's the unique thing about it, you know. We're not. I'm not going to just sit in the back and watch him fight. I'm going to go out there and help you know he's gonna hear my voice more than anybody else's voice in that cage and vice versa Antonio for yourself now what are the nerves like you've obviously fought before but now what's the pressure like to know that your son is gonna be fighting later in the night compared to you know earlier in your career this wasn't a thing yeah well you know honestly there's no pressure this time and that's what's kind of scary is that if I lose I can use that as an advantage in the corner with him saying hey I lost now you got to bring home the bacon if I win then I still say the same thing. Hey, son, I won. You better win. You can't let it, you can't let this happen. So he's, he's, I feel like it just it's working itself out. It is what it is. Uh, I just I'm scared because I'm not angry for the first time in a fight. I'm not pissed off. I'm not mad. I don't have any animosity. And I used to fight off of that adrenaline. Well, now I'm just calm. Everything in my life is great. My son's 14 and 0. My gym's successful. My guys are undefeated. I'm kind of scared. Like this is too easy. Can you peel the per curtain back a little bit? You've coached a lot of guys who know a bunch of the body shop in Bellator. How is AJ treated a little different, whether you're hard on him or whether you push him more? What's what's different when he's you know, your son you're training? There's no difference. I've learned through growing up, through hardship, how to separate emotions. And I've always instructed people and him, take your emotions out of everything and do what's right. I know he's a man of spirituality, so spiritually, what's right? What's right to you? What registers right? Uh, take your emotions out because when we're emotional, we make dumb mistakes. We do things without thinking about it. So it's easy. When I'm his coach, I'm not his dad, and I'm able to remove that and be the coach. And I don't give a shit what your opinions are. I'm your coach. You respect me or you go somewhere else. When I'm dad, it's, hey, this is what I want for you out of life. This is what's best for you. I've been through the hardship. I've done it the wrong way. You've got an opportunity to do something great and be a legacy in the sport. I went the wrong road pissed off the wrong people. I didn't play the political games. Don't do that. Just be quiet and be the best and I'll take care of the rest. And as far as his friend, hey, we hang out, we have a good time. Do what you want your daughters to do. Be who you want your daughters to date. It's pretty easy. So, you know. Now, easy. you two still live together, right? You still yeah, at the house. Is there a lot of fight talk or is it that's something you leave at the gym? No, nah, nah, it's, it's life talk then. We're at home. It's about life, investing his money and making sure that he does the right thing financially. He's not out in the streets living ghetto fabulous. You know, he likes to dress, he likes his jewelry. But I said, those are all things that are uh, liability. Let's focus on assets. And so he's, he's good. He's, you know, he bought his first house. Everything's great. Like I said, I, I could die tomorrow and be happy with everything I've done. Antonio, was there any issues with you getting licensed just because of the layoff and obviously father time? Yeah, they didn't understand how I was in such great shape. So they were like, this doesn't make sense. It's your age and your numbers. Uh, we're going to have to just, just, just to make sure we want to do this. So I'm having to run with no shoes on. I start going back into the jungle days of my Mandingo ways, uh, holding my breath to get my heart rate up. Like I said, I train year round with these guys. When they got a camp, I got a camp. And I've got 10 guys that's got camps. I'm doing 10 camps a year. So I'm always in shape. This shape was easy. It's staying injury free 
and being natural, showing people, look, you can do this naturally. You don't need to be on PDs and steroids. I hate that, that this sport has developed such a, such a reputation for that. And I want to be the guy to say, you don't have to do that. What has been your secret to, you know, being, I know you're in the gym all the time, obviously you're in great shape, but is there anything in particular that you think you do that has made you still compete at a high level and you know, being able to train with these guys? Being happy. Man, that's the greatest gift in the world is being happy. There's just no time for illness. There's no time for uh, animosity. I know I was a very angry person growing up. You know, I was ready to kill anybody who stood in front of me and said something that pissed me off. But now, I want to pray with them. So what changed? Uh, I think it was a part of maturity. You know, getting older and then having to be the example for so many guys in my gym that knew my street life, that kind of felt like, wow, I, I heard about you in the streets, I heard this, I heard that, is that true? Some of it is, some of it's not, but they're looking up to me. So I have to lead by my actions, not by my words. And so they have kept me on track. And I'm sure fighting this week has brought you back memory lane. I think, uh, you know, people in Canada remember you when you fought for MFC, and I know that was a big deal, you were the champion. Are you kind of getting flashbacks to that heading into this fight week of, you know, when you were champ for them? Nah, you know what, I've dealt with so much adversity, man. I don't even, it's not, like I say, I don't even have feelings for that. I'm just excited to be this age, be able to compete. I'm gonna be 50 years old in less than six months. I feel great, I'm healthy, I can talk and articulate, my face is all busted up. I mean, that's a blessing. I think I've had more stitches in my, yeah. my short amount of years. Yeah, but you make way more money than I do with your style of fighting versus my style. <laughs> yeah. was, that, hey, hey. was that an actual conversation as far as like the style of fighting versus making no. money? Was that ever like, or did it just come natural? I, I like to throw my hands. Yeah. I, I'm a natural born wrestler, but I'm trying to get some. No matter where I'm at, you hit me, I want to pay back. He likes to fight. Yeah, I like to fight. That's so we is. work on him not getting hit during all the hit. Yeah. Look at his career. He doesn't really get hit. So footwork, the foundation of anything is footwork. So we spent two years just on footwork and he didn't even know it. It's I funny, was making he, he, he always told me something. He said, you don't even know what you're doing. And by the time you figure out what you're doing, you're gonna be so far ahead. And literally now I'm starting to figure out what I'm doing. I'm starting to figure out how to set people up, how to make people move yes. where I want them to move. And like perfect example, uh, fight when I fought John McCaffrey, everybody was like, oh, it was a wild brawl. No, it was a setup, and I knew he was going to throw that overhand right to block it, drop my left hand, and throw it from, from ground under. So it, it's those little setups that people don't see. It looks sporadic, but Robin Black said best. He said he created that opening. I created that opening, and, and it's, it's so far ahead of where the sport's evolving. By the time people catch on, I'm going to probably be done, you know? I told him that when he was little. He said, man, they don't even understand the way you train. They don't even understand your movement. Every fight's different. You can't, well, how do you train for him? What is he going to do this time? He's going to wrestle? He's going to strike? He's going to do jiu-jitsu? You ain't even seen his game, his full game yet. So, I mean, you got a little of him when Pat Kern took him down. He split his head open. If I can't hold him down, who's going to hold him down? First fight, I threw an elbow. So, where is he going to get beat at? And that's the unique part for me as a father. Like, I know what he's capable of and what he can do. You guys haven't even seen it you're just following the coattails of each fight. But each fight has been a different fight. And the fights that he should have won, he shouldn't have won, or he shouldn't have finished the guy, he knocked him out. The fights that he should have knocked him out, he just went to a decision. But no one knows what's going through his mind and his life and what's going through him. I know, and I said, man, as soon as you get your mental right, dude, you are going to hurt people and they're gonna change some shit about this sport. And he's gonna hurt people really bad. Hey Jay, obviously, you know, you win, there's the draw and everything, you know, that's going to happen. Is it safe to say that your number one pick, if you have your choice, is Pitbull? I want my belt. It's just what it is. He takes it personal, he takes it... I, I don't know what the whole little animosity of everything is, bro. Like, like he, he's had a great career, he, he still continues to fight, he's still doing great things in the sport. You know, he's two-time champ, two different divisions now. That's an accomplishment I want, you know? So it, it's nothing personal. I kind of look up to him, but at the end of the day, he's standing in my way. And, and I smell fear from a mile away, you know? I've been calling your name since I stepped in that in that cage. And I'm, I'm 14 and 0 now. You're fighting a 135 pounder when you're a 145 and 155 pound champ. It doesn't make sense to me, but it is what it is. And then he goes out and calls out Khabib. Bro, you got a 14 and 0, 24 year old dog sitting in front of you calling your name out. I'm hungry. I told him, that leash and that kennel, whenever you're ready to go to the pound, I'm taking you and I'm putting you down. You expect Pitbull to win? 
Um, yeah, I think Juan's gonna give him the blues, and it, it's gonna go back and forth. I think it's gonna be an exciting fight. It's just, it's the same thing as the Chandler versus Pitbull fight. I think it's gonna be a great fight stylistically, but I think that power of, of Pitbull is where Juan's gonna have issues, and I just feel like Juan might break. You said that this is an opportunity to show your complete game now. It's like the Everything's off, like everything goes. Yeah, it, it's just going in there and being comfortable, you know? I gotta be comfortable with blowing someone's knee out. It, it sounds fucked up, I feel messed up saying it, but that's what I have to go do. I gotta go blow someone's knee out. I gotta go split someone's face open until the ref stops it. it it's part of the game, you know what I mean? I've literally been out there punching and kicking people. I haven't thrown John Jones kicks to knees, I haven't thrown elbows. Pat was the first person I threw elbows against. And that was probably the first time I was not nervous, but I knew I had to go in there and do exactly what I needed to do. So with, with that, it was that that's AJ doing exactly what he needs to do. You know, it, it was a smart fight. I left no room for error in that fight. So that that's what you can look forward to with adding more AJ elbows and just the little limber things that I do that everyone's like, oh, he's he's messing around. He's gonna get caught. No, it's it's my style. Can you describe your adrenaline once you step into your ring on that day? Calm, collect. A lot of guys go in there and they'll get an adrenaline rush, and after five minutes, they're done. They don't have anything. And then second, second round, they're trying to recover. For me, I go in there and I manage that. I take that first adrenaline rush and I'll manage it throughout the whole fight. So by the time my adrenaline wears off, I'm I'm now relying on my cardio, which is a whole another aspect of my fight game. That's that's I go 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 go. How did you train differently, or what did you do in preparation for this fight, so knowing your opponent? I didn't stop training. I haven't stopped training since Hawaii. Um, I've literally been in the gym since, what, what was that, November last year? No breaks. After The week after the fight, you're supposed to take 30 days up. I'm not getting touched. I'm back in there. How sharp do you feel now? Man, this is the best I've ever looked. This is the best I've ever felt. And like my dad said, I'm kind of nervous because usually, man, it's, it's, oh, I got relationship problems. I got home issues. I got partying issues. Whatever it is, you know, whatever life issues come about, like, all that shit's gone now. Like, now it's literally everything I've dreamed about, everything I've spoke into existence is right here, right now. So it, it's, it's, it's here, man. It's here and it's go time. So when I think... Focus is sharp. Yeah, focus is sharper than it's ever been. And guys, when I think about great uh, father-son sports moments, uh, I think about Ken Griffey Jr. and Ken Griffey Sr. hitting back-to-back -back home runs in the same game. Could you guys give us something similar on Saturday night, something that's going to top that maybe that we'll never forget? Well, he's going to go do what Antonio McKee does, take the no down, splice him open, and then me? Well, Georgie says he's going to rush in there. Me having a 74-inch reach, he's going to rush into something he's not expecting. So. Uh, Expect a knockout if he comes at me crazy. I'm you trying to get Antonio? it over in the first round. I'll Is give him it? second round. Oh, I'm gonna go <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give George a second round. I'm done in five. I'm gonna be looking at you. Right. <laughs> we get two. We get we get knockouts from both of you guys in the same night. That would be man. That that's that's History iconic. Yeah. That's that's legendary. You know what I mean? That that goes up to live to his legacy of being eight years undefeated and doing what he does best. Kicking ass, and then the mercenary doing what he does best. Kick ass, take names. Of course you guys are going to be supporting each other, but is there going to be a little friendly competition to who's going to put on the, the better performance for the night? Is it bragging rights between the two? No, his, his bragging rights are my bragging rights. You know, iron sharpens iron. When you were up there and you were rolling around, you said, oh, you, you guys ain't seen this jujitsu. If you had to put a percentage on what we've seen from you, what have we seen from you? Stand-up wise, I'd say about 70. 70 percent you guys have seen the kicks i haven't really dialed them in to where i'm throwing and setting people up for all my crazy kicks um i just go out there and kind of throw them i throw kicks keep people away ground game you guys have seen probably about i mean i'm a wrestler so front headlocks and wrestling is base no one's really gotten past those yet so i would say you guys see about a quarter of my game there uh pat took me down didn't get past my guard i didn't even go for an, a submission i didn't feel threatened so ground game, you guys have yet to see anything. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.